you know, if at some point in your life, you know, you have to work with people where you feel a bit insecure. Like I would ignore what's happening in the short term. Like there is so much opportunity ahead over the next 10 years or 20 years. Getting into an elite institution doesn't guarantee success. Mm -hmm. uh, it matters a lot, but it doesn't guarantee success. Partly, how did I do it? I didn't tell, tell people uh, for a while. <laughs> uh, just had a small team and, you know, worked on it and... Uh, People working anywhere in the world, born anywhere in the world, can create a product and make it available to anyone in the world. The most used messaging app in Southeast Asia was built by a young man born in Ukraine who moved to the US. And the three most popular viral games in the US in recent years came from entrepreneurs in Finland, Ireland, and Vietnam. You're the ones building the next Google, the next Spotify, the next Tesla, the next, well, we don't even know, but what I know is it's the idea that matters. It didn't matter where you come from or what your background is. One revolutionary idea, one brilliant invention can unleash other entrepreneurs to revolutionize industries in ways you could never predict. My question is, uh, how much power you have as a CEO of Google? Can you change the Google Doodle to ITKGP building for a day? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to send a message to the team. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I, <laughs> Before you get too excited, I mean, the good news is Google is set up in a way, uh, I think even if I send that email, they wouldn't do it, and here's the reason why. You know, I think we have, you know, we, we build an organization with strong ideals and values on when we show doodles for what occasions. And uh, it's less about what I want to happen as much as, you know, we have a set of rules to go by. At that time, Eric was our CEO, Eric Schmidt, and, you know, I remember him being angry once and say, hey, because he realized we were trying to build a browser, and he was like, do you know what it takes to build a browser? You know, it takes a... I mean, because he had gone through the browser battles. He definitely didn't, <laughs> you know, was hesitant for us to do it. Uh, partly, how did I do it? I didn't tell, tell people uh, for a while. <laughs> No, just had a small team and, you know, worked on it. And, uh, and only when we had something to show, uh, you, know, uh, you know, we had a chance to uh, show the product. And that got people excited. And so, but it is, uh, you know, it's a good lesson. I think if you have a set of committed people, uh, passionate people, you can, you can achieve, you know, even I couldn't have foreseen what it would eventually become. But, you know, shows the power of a small group of committed people. You, know, you, you will have many, many, many opportunities to, opportunities to reinvent yourself. And so, uh, you know, so I think, you know, it's worthwhile taking risks and trying to do something you're really, uh, you know, excited by. And if the first attempt you don't do it, you know, you can try again and, you know, things tend to work out in the long run. You will make the world better in your own way, even if you don't know exactly how. The important thing is to be open-minded so that you can find what you love. For me, it was technology. The more access my family had to technology, the better our lives got. So when I graduated, I knew I wanted to do something to bring technology to as many others as possible. The only thing that got me from there to here, other than luck, was a deep passion for technology and an open mind. So take the time to find the thing that excites you more than anything else in the world. Not the thing your parents want you to do, or the thing that all your friends are doing, or that society expects of you. You know, look, it's remarkable to be at uh, IIT. Uh, there are many, many great people who don't make it in, and you'll see this later in life. People do well from all walks of life. Uh, I think it's important to remember, uh, you know, uh, Getting into an elite institution doesn't guarantee success. Mm -hmm. uh, it matters a lot, but it doesn't guarantee success. And, uh, you know, I think, I think that's, it's important to keep that perspective in life. And, uh, you know, uh, life is a long road. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so you want to you wanna take it at the right pace and enjoy what you're doing. You know, if at some point in your life, you know, you have to work with people where you feel a bit insecure, right? That's essential because that means you're working with people who are better than you and who are pushing you. 
right? And uh, so I will always encourage if you if you actually feel very secure in what you do, uh, you know that means you're doing something comfortable and you're not pushing yourself. And so uh, there are many many times I felt uh, working with people in a group. Am I doing enough? Are these people seem much better than me. And I think I think that's a inherent part of learning. You know, I I came from South. Uh, you know, I came from Chennai. I had learned Hindi in school, but I never spoke it much. Um, you know, just listening to how people were speaking, I just thought you address people this way. So one day there was someone in the mass, and I had to call him. I called him Abe Saleh. <laughs> that, you know, that's that's all. That's all. That, you know, in my first couple of weeks, I thought you call people that way. It required. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and, and uh, next thing I know, the, uh, the, the folks in the mess were quite upset, and I think they temporarily closed down the mess. Oh, wow. So wow, I wasn't wow. very popular for, uh, for that day. So. so you were responsible for the mess shutting down at IIT? Uh, just, just for a moment. Yeah, just for a moment. <laughs> no, it's good. Look, I, mean, I think it's important to remember uh, you're going to have setbacks. Uh, it doesn't go exactly the way you... Some, sometimes it does, but that's rare. For most people, it kind of meanders, and, you, you know, it takes longer than you think it is. And as I said earlier to young entrepreneurs, there's no better time to be a young entrepreneur. Like I would ignore what's happening in the short term. Like there is so much opportunity ahead over the next 10 years or 20 years. I think to creators, there, you know, there's no better time to be a creator. What is it that drives innovation at Google? You know, I, you know, I think we've always, uh, you know, we've always had an ambitious approach to it. Uh, you know, we, we call it internally as uh, you know, 10x or moonshots. We try to work on things which, uh, you know, the criteria we think is we want to work on things which people will use every day. Mm -hmm. It will apply to billions of people and it solves a real problem for them. So that's the bar. So anything we try to do, we, we think of it that way. And so we aim high. We try to use deep computer science to anything we approach so that we can make, uh, have a differentiated approach to solving it. And you know, and you want to aim high enough that you fail. Uh, you know, a few times. I think that's the natural part of the process. Uh, in fact, you know, Larry used to say, if you aim, if you work on really difficult things, you're better off because you have no competition. Others aren't working on uh, yeah. that difficult yeah. a problem. And even if you fail, you end up doing something great in the sure. process. And so, I think that's the philosophy which has guided us all through these years.